Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Doug Weber. I'm a program manager also in the Biological Technologies Office. Uh, I joined uh, DARPA about two years ago. Um, but, but really, my, uh, my relationship with DARPA started nearly a decade ago. My very first federally funded grant came from uh, Dr. Ling and the Revolutionizing Prosthetics Program. A whopping $50,000. <laughs> To, you know, to, to support two graduate students to, to, to start, my, uh, start my, uh, the research in my lab. That very small, uh, which to me was a, a large investment um, at a critical time in the, 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 the launching of my research program, was really huge. Uh, NIH wasn't, uh, wasn't interested in my work yet at that point, and uh, that early investment from DARPA really got, uh, got the lab up on its feet. And, um, and today, uh, I have the great privilege uh, privilege of uh, serving the agency from the other side of the desk as a PM. So uh, my research is, is really at the intersection of neuroscience and engineering. A as a neuroscientist, my goal is really to understand how is it that the nervous system does so many amazing things? How does it enable us to sense the world around us? How does it enable us to think, make decisions, and importantly, act to affect change? As an engineer, I'm interested in taking that knowledge and applying it to the development and creation of new devices. Can we use that knowledge of how the nervous system works to inform the development of technologies that can reduce the burden of disease? So I'm practical. You know, I want to make real things. And what better place in the world to have that opportunity is to go to DARPA. DARPA is in, in, amazingly good at creating capabilities. And at first, some of those capabilities uh, seem far-fetched, you know, too visionary, perhaps. You know, the, 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 uh, we're often criticized for, for trying to uh, be too sci-fi. You know, but to convince you that, in fact, having that, that, that uh, very ambitious uh, vision for what's possible um, is really important and, in fact, uh, 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 practical, I thought I would start with a, a couple of examples of how science fiction visions have, in, uh, have been, in fact, realized uh, by projects at DARPA. So I grew up in the 80s. Um, raise your hand if you can uh, name the t television show that this uh, image was taken from. Thank you. It's OK to admit it. Um, so this is, uh, this is an image taken from Knight Rider, a uh, popular uh, TV show among my demographic uh, in, the, uh, in the 80s. Um, this uh, uh, David Hasselhoff was the main character. My sisters loved him. He was a, a hunk, uh, was the word at the time. Um, but this car, like that's what that's what really uh, drew me in. This car was freaking amazing, right? It could drive itself. It had X-ray vision. It had a talking computer. Okay, and in fact, it could talk to David Hasselhoff through some wrist-worn uh, computer communication device. I mean, how ridiculous is that? A smartphone that you can wear on your wrist? Like, we'll never see that. Okay, but, but back to the car. Okay, so this car could drive itself. How ridiculous could, would that have sounded in the 80s, right? A car that could drive itself? Fast forward 25 years, nearly a decade ago already, and DARPA's urban challenge showed that it was, in fact, possible to create a vehicle that could drive itself completely autonomously, no human supervision, not through wide open desert, but through an urban course. OK, so this is a computer trained to think and sense the world around it and operate itself completely autonomously. And today, again, less than a decade later, there's a new race on, and that's to build an entire industry around this basic concept, a wholly new industry of driverless vehicles. Again, science fiction to reality in, I think, very impressive time scales. OK, let's look at another example of how science fiction has moved to reality under the supervision of DARPA. This video, uh, this clip uh, taken from The Empire Strikes Back, uh, per perhaps a more popular example of science fiction than Knight Rider even, um, shows what would be truly the ultimate in restoration of prosthetic hand function, okay? Imagine that, having, having a prosthetic hand that looks natural, moves natural, even responds to environmental stimuli like, an, like a human hand does. Wouldn't that be great? Dr. Ling showed us uh, uh, the work that was done in the revolutionizing prosthetics 
to bring us towards this vision. And our motivation remains to uh, improve the quality of lives of our wounded warfighters. And in fact, uh, a year ago, we, we uh, received approval from the FDA to uh, bring the, the DECA Luke arm to market. Isn't that remarkable? You know, uh, seven years from concept to FDA approved device uh, that uh, has the promise or the potential to provide improved quality of life for many, uh, many of our wounded warfighters. But we're not quite done, right? We have this incredible, incredibly capable prosthetic limb and uh, a, um, a user community that, that needs to and that wants these devices and could benefit uh, greatly from their, uh, from their use. But the, what's missing is the coupling, that connection uh, between the prosthesis, this, this sophisticated robot, and the user that will enable that amputee to control the action, the many actions of that prosthetic device, and importantly, be able to uh, sense feedback from that prosthesis. So how do we couple these two together? Jeff showed you some examples of how we're working uh, with groups around the, uh, around the country to make connections directly with the brain. Certainly the potential uh, for that approach is amazing. Imagine having the ability to communicate directly with uh, any neuron in your brain to exchange motor, sensory, visual, and other information. But we're, we're not quite there yet. What can we do today for these wounded warfighters who don't want to wait around decades for that technology to reach fruition? My approach is to uh, focus on accessing the peripheral nerves. The peripheral nerves are our, really our information superhighway for our bodies, okay? Those, uh, those nerves carry all of the motor and sensory information that is normally used to, uh, to sense and control our movements. What if we could create technology that accesses those signaling pathways and use, that, uh, use, those, use those information channels to control and sense our prosthetic devices, okay? These, uh, these nerves are much more easily accessible than the brain, okay? So instead of having to do uh, brain surgery, we can simply inject uh, or make uh, 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 small uh, incisions into the arm to access these nerves, place devices that allow us to measure or stimulate activity in those nerves, and by doing so, establish a bi-directional communication pathway directly with the nervous system. Okay, so imagine that, having a, a robotic arm you know, essentially carbon fiber, aluminum, and silicone that's coupled directly to the person's nervous system such that when that limb uh, moves and makes contact with objects in the environment, you don't feel like you're, you're holding a tool or a wrench in your hand. You feel like you're holding your own hand, okay? And you're able to perceive rich sensations of texture and force and shape so you can immediately recognize any object that you grasp in your, uh, in your hand, just like you do in, in, uh, with natural hands. I mean, we, we use our hands not just as tools, but as means to explore the world around us. And once we have the ability to communicate directly with the nervous system, and specifically the peripheral nervous system, we can do that. Okay, so what are the challenges that we must face to make that happen? First, we need to understand the nervous system, uh, the language of the nervous system. Okay, so the nervous system communicates information through uh, patterns of impulses, so-called action potentials or spikes. And it's the temporal sequencing of these action potentials, much like a Morse code, that, it, that really uh, uh, that, that provides the basis for encoding and delivering information. And by understanding how information is encoded in these uh, pulse train sequences, we now have a, a language for encoding and delivering information. Okay, so first we need to know the language. Second, we need to have a communication channel, a path for talking uh, directly to the nervous system. And at DARPA, we're working uh, with uh, small companies and industries to build next generation technology that allows us to communicate directly with nerves permanently for the life of an individual such that we can measure and stimulate activity in any part of the peripheral nerve that we want to exchange information effectively and reliably. So knowledge of, knowledge of how information is encoded and a, a means for exchanging information directly with the nerve coupled together will bring us to, to this vision of reanimating uh, uh, prosthetic limbs, making them feel and move like natural limbs. But why stop there? 
Okay, once we have the knowledge of how information is encoded in our nervous system, and we have an ability to exchange information directly uh, with it, what else could we do? There's many aspects of our physiology, nearly every aspect of our physiology is monitored and regulated by our nervous system. What if we could access those information paths continuously? What might we be able to do or learn about our physiology? Could we control our blood pressure? Wouldn't that be great? How many people, are, well, probably shouldn't ask that question, but I'm sure many of you know people that take high blood pressure medication. I have many family members that, that uh, for, for decades have been on high blood pressure medication. Imagine if we could eliminate the need for hypertensive medications by, not using dr by, uh, by instead using dr uh, devices that regulate the signaling in our nervous system to bring down uh, 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 vascular tone. Okay, a totally, totally natural approach to reducing blood pressure uh, without the need for drugs. What if we could monitor and control the actions of any muscle in our body? Now, uh, for most of us, that, that might not uh, seem like an important thing. We're pretty, pretty confident with our ability to move the, limbs, the, the muscles that we have. But imagine being paralyzed and una unable to breathe on your own or unable to control your sphincter muscles that uh, maintain continence and micturition in your bladder. Imagine if we could create technology that accesses the functions of those muscles and restores uh, control of them to someone that's paralyzed. Imagine if we could uh, access the nerves that control our adrenal system and be able to regulate our body's response to stressful situations. Personally, I could use a little of this myself right now. I'm a little anxious. Wouldn't it be great if you could dial up or down the body's response uh, to stress and anxiety? And a final example is, what if we could use the body's communication with the immune system to control uh, our response to infectious disease or to uh, up or down regulate inflammation to speed the healing process? And our next speaker is going to uh, talk at length about this topic, but I just want to highlight uh, the long list of uh, diseases which are profound in their burden on the, human, uh, on the human condition. Imagine having the ability with a single device to eliminate every single uh, disease listed here by accessing the, the circuits that control our uh, neuroinflammatory pathways. Wouldn't that be incredible? Again, no drugs. No surgery, just a device that controls the innate signaling in our nervous system, a fully natural approach to providing profound healing. So to work towards this vision, I started the Electrics program very recently. Uh, this program is going to kick off this fall, and the goal is simple. First, let's understand how is it that the nervous system interacts with our, the organs of our body to control our internal physiological state. We're going to focus on the uh, immune and inflammatory uh, uh, conditions uh, as a, a key focus of the effort. But in general, the concept is simple. Let's understand the role of the nervous system in monitoring and controlling these functions, and then use that knowledge to build technology that can access these circuits, providing continuous monitoring of our health status and direct and personalized treatment delivered directly to the nervous system. So the, the system itself will have three basic components, an ability to monitor health status uh, through recording of biomarkers or neural signals, an ability to diagnose disease state based on the, the pattern of activity that's measured for each individual, and then from that diagnosis, an ability to intervene directly with, uh, through the nervous system to affect an improvement in physiological status. You can think of this as triage nurse, physician, and pharmacist, as a, in a, all wrapped up in a single implantable device that's intelligent enough to make decisions about how to treat and has the ability to provide effective treatment directly through um, this very natural pathway, which is our nervous system, essentially enabling our bodies to heal themselves without the need uh, for drugs or other conventional treatments. <laughs>